Yo, what's up guys? You got Pokemon here, and today we're going to be doing a team building guide for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Now, keep in mind this is before Pokemon Home comes out for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and I'll also be having a lot of updated guides as well. And with me, I have my buddy BKC, also known as Kevin, an incredible Pokemon player and just an incredible Pokemon mind, and I do encourage you guys to go ahead and subscribe to him. Sub to me as well if you like this type of content, as well as Wi-Fi battles, you'll see that from both of us, and moveset guides, and just overall thoughts on this game and again look forward to a lot more pokemon brilliant uh brilliant diamond and shining pro content so kevin you can say hi to the people what's up guys i've been waiting for this for years and years and now this is all i care about so i've quit my job and dropped out of school and i've left my girlfriend and all i care about now is brilliant diamond and shining pearl it feels like you didn't have to do all of that in order to do that like no, maybe you could have given I her didn't. shining pearl if you know nah <laughs> She just would have gotten in the way. <laughs> anyway, so today we're going to be doing some team building. This is a basic team building guide. We'll be doing more and more. Like I said, Kevin and I are... If there's anyone who's more passionate than me about Gen 4 on YouTube, it's BKC. That's probably like the one person I can name who's more passionate about Gen 4. And I love Gen 4. So we're going to yeah, give you some tips. Yeah, I have a tips. problem. <laughs> he does. We're going to give you some tips. And remember, again, I want to stress that this is pre-home, which means that certain Pokemon don't have certain moves. Like Clefable, for instance, does not have access to Soft Boiled until Pokemon Home. So we're going to give you this one. And then later, we'll give you more and more and more and more like intermediate and more advanced builds and, and like stuff like that. So Kevin... What is the first thing you do when you team build? This is the easiest thing in the world. What is it? I decide what I want the rough idea of the team to be, and then I try to figure out how to best execute that idea. And that sounds really abstract, but it's uh, it, it can, what's nice about it is that it can be anything. And uh, generally it's more easy to do once the metagame is more established. Uh, like, if we're gonna take the classic Gen 4, then I would say, alright, well, I want this team to abuse Spikes alongside Calmine Jirachi, who's really good uh, with that. And maybe I throw in Choice Band T-Tar, and everything covers itself really well. But in a metagame that is less established, like uh, BDSP, then generally you're gonna be trying to figure out, alright, what are the big threats? because everything has to respond to those big threats. It's gonna be abusing them or answering them. Yep. So, uh, right at the beginning, then we're gonna wanna figure out the offensive stuff, right? That's what everyone, well, everyone's afraid of Gliscor because it looks unkillable. Uh, so, a lot of the offense, I think, is gonna be trying to adapt our Gen 4 knowledge into ways that now get past, uh, number one, fairy types, and number two, Poison Heal, Gliscor, who are, if you threw either of those into Gen 4 OU, then they would completely dominate everything even more than they already do. So, uh, yeah, we're, uh, oh, also, another thing that is here that is not in Gen 4 OU is Garchomp. Yep, that's, that's the big really one. that's really big. That is the big that's one. That's really, really I think, huge. I think any offense is going to have Garchomp for sure, if it doesn't get banned yeah. or not. I also want to note, guys, if you are coming from Generation 8, Generation 7, there are no, there is no Aviolite in this game. There's no Heavy Duty Boots, which, you know, a lot of people are actually happy about. There is also um, no Rocky Helmet, which is pretty, you know, that's actually, I, I kind of want Rocky Helmet in Gen 4. I, I like the idea. Rocky behind Helmet it. and Assault Vest would be yeah, good. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. There's no Assault Vest. So, But if that's the price to pay for no boots, I am all for it. Yeah. Uh, that's another thing, actually, that now knockoff is a genuine offensive weapon. So something like Weavile, which isn't very good in Gen 4 OU, is now actually a threat because it has real stabs. It's only, got knockoff. And only ice after crash. only after Pokemon Home because currently oh, it doesn't have does knockoff. Have it yet? Currently it does not oh, have knockoff. And uh, ignore that. So for now, Weavile is still bad. <laughs> Just how I like it. <laughs> but yeah, like Kevin um, said, you basically uh, decide what you want your team to be around. So in in more friendly terms. Pick a Pokemon you want to build around, and Garchomp. I mean, what 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 else really? Yes, um, that's that's Garch like the classics: Garchomp, Infernape, uh, maybe Empoleon if you want to be ambitious, because Agility Empoleon is awesome. Yep. Uh, another thing that's worth mentioning, actually, if you're trying to translate everything from Gen Four, is that uh, status works differently. So, uh, like, you can't paralyze Electric types anymore. You can't sleep, or you can't spore Grass types. Uh, so that's pretty huge. There's a lot of stuff that we actually have to uh, go over, and I didn't realize that my my builder looked like this, so I apologize for everybody. I'll be fixing it right now. But yep, yeah, like Kevin said, uh, there's just so many different changes. It's, it's basically Gen 4 
with a twist. So we're gonna do our best to help yeah. you out. But, this Pokemon is banned. You... Oh, sorry. Uh, but when you uh, have an established metagame, then you can have all these really intricate team plans, and you could just you know write a thesis about every which way every move set and item and Pokemon interact with every other move set and item and Pokemon on the other team on uh, their team. But for now, there's just so much unknown that it's really going to be simplest to just figure out the basics yeah. uh, before you start trying to get advanced. So you got to figure out, all right, what's stopping Garchomp? Uh, how are we breaking through Gliscor? Things like that. Even just figuring out the standard movesets. Like right now, uh, the classic Mix Infernape then uh, that's going to... Is it going to start running Gunk Shot for Clefable, for example? If it even has uh, access to Gunk Shot, which it won't currently. Remember, because... Oh, not in home? Because this, yeah. Because uh, after home, it will. After home, it will, right. for sure. But uh, it won't have Hidden Power. Like, Infernip is a good example, because Infernip doesn't have access to Hidden Power right now. Is it going to run Close Combat, U-Turn, Grass Knot, Overheat type of thing mm -hmm. instead of, like, you know, Hidden Power Ice to check Dragonite? Is it going to resort back to the old school sets with Stone Edge? You know, mm. for Gyarados plus Dragonite in the same thing. So it's That's another thing to keep in mind, actually, is that with uh, weather no longer being permanent, something like Infernape gets a really big boost. A huge buff, a huge buff. It it's can't be worn down by Sand plus Life 4 plus Hazard. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. If you've ever played Gen 4 OU, then you know the only reason that Mix Infernape doesn't destroy everything is because it KOs itself through its own Life Orb and Recoil in Sand. But without that, then... I don't know, I think uh, we're going to be, a lot of the early parts of this pre-home metagame is going to be figuring out how to make the most out of Infernape, because it is just, the potential is just through the roof for it to do a million different yeah, things. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I would actually compare it to uh, Gen 7 and Gen 6 UU, uh, in a se well, Gen 7 UU specifically, where like Nasty Plot Infernape with Z-Moves is really good. This is where a return mm -hmm. of upset like Nasty Plot could work, because it doesn't have to worry about being worn down. So... Common answers to Garchomp, uh, the ones that come to mind when it's Gen 4 is Skarmory, is a big one, obviously, and, and the other fairy types that are actually going to be relevant, well the two fairy types that are going to be relevant most likely are both Togekiss, which is now fairy, doesn't have heavy duty boots though, which is going to make a difference, and Clefable, but what we want to keep in mind about Clefable is even though it does have access to both Magic Guard and Unaware, which, you know, are both good in their own regard. It doesn't have access to Soft Boy. It only has Moonlight, so it only has 8 PP. So a lot of this is going to actually... It doesn't even have Wish? I believe Wish was an... Of... I know it has Healing Wish. Uh, I'll actually check right now. I can check on the side. So we... We'll look through the... You actually have to check uh, Cleffa if you want to check for Wish. It does have Wish, excuse me. So it does have Wish and it yeah, has Moonlight. That's great. So that's something to uh, if, uh, keep Can in it mind. run Wish and Moonlight on the same set? It, sh it should be able to, considering okay. uh, Moonlight is a level uh, I would, and Wish is Egg Move. Yeah, I would recommend, uh, if you're going to run Clef, do not run Wish Protect, because that's the most exploitable thing in the world in general. Uh, especially now with the updated mechanics where you can get roared out on Protect. Um, but in general, it's much nicer to have Wish and Moonlight, so you're not either forced to two-turn recovery with Wish, or you're not getting hampered by uh, Moonlight having only APP. Yep. So I would definitely recommend that. I agree. We have uh, updated Rotom forms, by the way, We right? do. We have Rotom Wash, okay. Rotom Heat as their actual cool. things. They're not ghost types. So again, going back, so the two fairy types that would actually be most likely relevant would be Toekiss and Clefable. And then in terms of the steel type that could stop Garchomp, Skarmory, depending on the Garchomp set. And then in terms of the bulkier Pokemon that have uh, a better shot at beating it. Gliscor is obviously number one uh, because it also still retains Ice Fang as well. Uh, but also just because it's bulky and unkillable because of Poison Heal. And it still has Roost. Yeah. And then Hippowdon on the bulkier side as well can do it. And I guess to a lesser extent, not, Quagsire. Yeah, to a, you have Bronzong, which is basically like Skarmory but yeah. worse. Yeah. So, uh, and it can't like threaten um, Chomp that, that much either. Like the most it can do is Toxic, which is. Which I don't even think it can Toxic in this. Yeah, or just uh, you know get subbed on or lum. So yeah. Oh, that's another big thing now that uh, explosion isn't the auto KO button it once was. Yep. So Bronzong can't even threaten with that. Exactly. And so, like I said, it can't learn Toxic until Pokemon Home. So it's, it's oh, crazy. So it's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> no HP Ice, no Toxic, no Boom. So yeah, Bronzong is just. If my opponent was trying to counter my Garchomp with Bronzong right now, I click Swords Dance in front of it. Yeah, I click Swords Dance in front of it. Like. 
It's three times until I plus six. Thanks for the th uh, the three swords dances. The thing with Gliscor is that like all these checks, and this is why Garchomp is such a force in general, is that uh, Gliscor, yeah, in a nutshell, you can take some hits from it and Ice Fang and Protect and all that fun stuff. But at the end of the day, it's still not a very good answer to a plus two Outrage. Exactly. No, Outrage is not the monstrous attack it once was because of those fairy types. But, and that's the big thing about SD Chomp, is that it now can't run both Fire Fang and Stone Edge. And without Stone Edge, it is going to be completely blanked by Togekiss. But, um, I guess you could run it alongside Magnezone. Yeah, Magnezone so would probably that's... be the best thing. I think that'd be the best partner as well. I agree. Yeah, with that's, that. a, that's a classic combination in general. Uh, you can just load up on dragons and things like Metagross that also really like uh, Skarmory down. And you just pair him with zone and then go to town. Yeah. Uh, so, like, if we actually had to build a Garchomp, before we even make a move set, because I think that we can adjust that as we're going, I'm kind of leaning towards either Choice or Swords Dance. I think Swords Dance would be the most fun, right? It's Garchomp, right? Like, right. when's the last right. time we used Garchomp in Gen 4 OU? Before, like, <laughs> like maybe Never. During, the, during, the, during the Japanese meta, I did that. Like, like literally, like, 2006 like, meta, like, if you played someone online, they'd like, oh, Garchomp legal or Wobbuffet legal, right? That was, like... <laughs> Dude, I didn't even, I, I was lurking uh, before Platinum came out, so I didn't even get to, uh, I saw everyone else using Garchomp, and I was like, I want to use one, and then I got banned by the time I actually started playing, and yeah. I was like, oh, I missed my chance. So yes, SD Garchomp, please. Yeah. So um, The number one thing you want to do after uh, Garchomp is figure out how are you getting it on the field, and when it's forced out by a faster, super effective attack, what are you going to switch to to take advantage of that? Yep. So, uh, it, the easiest way of thinking, how is it going to get on the field? Because you don't want to just hold it back the whole game. Garchomp's too threatening to do that. Uh, so you're thinking you want to get it in against things like uh, Heatran. That's the number one thing that it's going to scare out. So you would love to have things like U-Turn. Uh, things don't have Flip Turn and stuff uh, yet, right? No. Like all those new... Uh, no, there's no. Uh, there should be no Flip Turn in this game. There is Volt Switch, like obviously. All? Yeah, there's there's no flip turn in this game, I believe. Uh, that's or why there's no Volt scale switch. shot either. There's there's Volt Switch for sure, 100% Volt okay. Switch. Like Magnus still gets it. So like there are opportunities like that. Another thing to note is the difference between this and all Gen 4s. There is team preview. So, oh yeah. Like like Kevin said, you can't just save your guards up in the back. They're gonna be aware of it the entire yeah. time. Yeah. So it's much better to just uh, get it as much as you can. So things like uh, Magnezone, Rotom. Uh, Rotom Wash is good. Both of those are good at switching into ice moves that might threaten Chomp out. Um, obviously, something like Mamoswine. Does Mamoswine get Icicle Crash uh, pre-home? It should have access to uh, Crash. Okay, that's going to be uh, that is going to be a defining threat. Uh, I have a feeling that everything early at er, this early point in the metagame is going to be running physical defense. Like Rotom's going to need it for Mamo. Gliscor is going to need it for Garchomp. And uh, so that can definitely be exploitable by Infernape, who loves when things... Infer Mix Infernape gets a lot worse when the hippos of the uh, metagame start leaning towards special defense. But when everything's physically defensive, that's when you know Mixape gets its reputation as the stall killer. Yeah, because it close uh, combats into overheats or grass knots and kills everything, which is awesome. Exactly. So this, uh, what Garchomp forces the meta into... Uh, to be able to handle it, I think is very exploitable. Even something like a Clefable, if you want to handle Chomp at all, then you have to go physically defensive, and suddenly you're not taking Mixape Fire Blast yep. well at all. And also on that note, you probably also have to go Ice Beam on that Pokemon too, because Moonblast exactly. doesn't even KO Guard Chomp. I know, exactly. I know, guys were. And, and oh, then you—that's when you uh, bring in the classic set that got Chomp banned in the first place in Diamond and Pearl, which is a uh, Yachi. Yeah. So suddenly, Mamoswine, you know, Zilch, a Clefable, you know, forget about it. Even Gliscor, Ice Fang, uh, Gliscor, Ice Fang into with Yachi into just a regular Ice Fang might not even KO Chomp. No, there's it's there's no way. Bulky. There's no way it does from no attack. It's no bulkier way. than Swapper. It's yep. crazy. I'll uh, pull up that calc right now, but yeah, I would definitely say Yachi is the classic Chomp set. And given how everything is going to be forced into using ice moves for Gliscor anyway, 
then you may as well take advantage of the I agree. Charm. I like but the idea. Why of that, not though. be able to uh, take a hit from Gyarados? Or a hit example. from or a hit from Starmie, which is one of the few exactly. faster Pokemon that can actually threaten it where a super effective hit. Exactly. So also, guys, I know that we're about 15 minutes in and we only have one Pokemon with a couple moves, but we're trying to give you the entire you know thought process behind. Uh, not only team building, but also team building in a, a brand new, you know, metagame. This is a day one video. So uh, I also want to note before we pick moves and when we talk about EVs, uh, if we want Garchomp to do its like best, if we want Garchomp to do Garchomp things. The classic EV spread, the not going to fail is to always go a plus speed nature. So you have the highest chance of doing what you want to do, right? If you want Garchomp oh, to do be we, have, we do have uh, EVs in this game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's okay. It's, I thought it was going to be like, uh, let's, let's go. No, 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 no. It's, 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 it's modern. It's modern. Don't worry. So like okay. the classic thing, like a Garchomp with Swords Dance will basically almost always run Jolly or Naive if it's running like Swords Dance Fire Blast to deal with Skarmory. But you'll always run Jolly. You'll most likely always go max speed because this allows you to get that speed over Flygon, a dragon that threatens you, over Jirachi, uh, over like base 100s and lower. And it also allows you to speed tie with opposing other Garchomp. So that's like when picking an EV spread for a Pokemon, when the metagame starts to develop a little bit more and Kevin was talking about, then you have the fun stuff, right? Just to give an example of that. Let's say the best Pokemon were Togekiss and Clefable and uh, Gliscor. I might start running Swords Dance, Shookaberry, Drapion with Ice Fang plus Poison Jab because it deals with all the above because they're so common. I know they're going to happen. But because we're still right now in that figuring out process and we're trying to think what will other players think as well this is like just the go to this is the this is the mon this is the mon to go to and that's why the ev spreads we want to be able to get off as much damage we want to be able to also be able to attack as much as possible so max speed allows us that to do that drapion thing was a perfect example and to add on that then i would also say uh and you generally want to be making the most of your speed tier at the beginning of the metagame yes. and i'll give you an example uh, in right now in Gen 4 OU, then if you are going to use Infernape, then there is a very, very strong case for you to go plus special attack. So, and you would be outsped by plus speed base 100s, but the metagame has developed in such a way that that almost doesn't matter because they've become so rare or because they're so much easier to deal with and whatnot. However, if you just... that's very much a product of right now a very very highly developed metagame if you you know went back to diamond pearl platinum heart gold soul silver when uh the plus speed base 100s were absolutely everywhere then you know if you used a non plus speed infernape then people would think you were just you know trying to lose now it's a legitimate choice but that's because of the way the metagames develop so right now, uh, you really want to just you know keep it simple. Wait until the uh, stuff settles down before you start getting fancy. And uh, speaking of base 100, then Gen 4 was when that speed tier was really took off. It was very important. That, it, that was whole, it was the holy grail. It was the the speed benchmark. Base and 102 was considered reason. fast, by the way, which is crazy. It's exactly, and that's why Garchomp is so ridiculous because it's, it has that perfect speed tier. It's just above the 100s and it, so it outruns everything and it destroys everything i mean rampardos destroys everything but it also doesn't have immense speed and or bulk, bulk. yeah at all it's, so, it's a glass cannon but this mod is not yeah. this mod is a this so mod is, is basically the perfect offensive pokemon and even when you throw things like fairy types at it then it's still a perfect offensive pokemon especially in this much more limited uh metagame that we're going back into so yeah chomp and then the so then you do the anti anti chomp so you have a way that to deal with um skarmory which is really going to be the only decent option and if you go the magnazone magnazone route or you can get fancy and do something like a trick iron ball metagross yeah. uh, which is also i think going to be a really good set because it ruins rotom wash yep so you can lure skarmory with that you either run that or a Magnezone, and then you have the uh, Pokemon that lure in or you know trap and destroy the few Pokemon that are capable of beating Chomp. So even if they don't have that, uh, even if you don't have that Magnezone target on the opposing team, that just means they don't have a Chomp answer. And so uh, you're looking to create these win-win scenarios in the team builder, so that no matter what your opponent brings you have the capacity to have something to play for, have a win to play for.
Yeah, I mean, that's basically, I couldn't have said it better myself. Like, he just explained why you would use something like this to deal with something that your mom, it basically just lets your mom do something for it. Like, you don't want to have a game where you just can't do anything the entire game. This this, this is basically what Magnezone does for Garchomp, or what the Iron Ball Metagross trick example does for Garchomp, because it is a mod that will learn the same exact thing that deals with Garchomp. So, I, I actually we have, like... Uh, we have Defog now, right? Yep, like a buff yep, Defog? Yep, yep, yep. Up okay. to date, so that will be really cool. I, uh... Also, just going back to Garchomp real quick, the moves that are going to be guaranteed on it are Swords Dance and Earthquake. Obviously, you know, you want to be able to threaten Heatran. That's guaranteed. And then we can decide between, like, Dragon Claw Outrage or Stone Edge or whatever we want to go from there. But I think these, this is just a given for right now. Oh, did they remove Pursuit from this, too? Yeah, there's no Pursuit. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, that's really, that's going to be messed up. Dude, Starmie is going to be messed up. Starmie is going to be super strong, which is, leads more reason to why Yachi Berry Garchomp should be good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my instinct is going to be for the SD Chomp set. So SD EQ, and well, let's see. Who are the dragons and well, other Garchomp. That's the other thing. Garchomp. Dragonite with multi scale. Um, mm. Latias, which is faster. Flygon. Yeah, you can't be walled by Flygon. I think you need um, Dragon Claw. So I think that the, yeah, it's also just generally good stab. Like what makes Garchomp so fearsome is its stab combination. Like, uh, without a uh, dragon move, then you're going to start getting messed up by Rotom, which is embarrassing. Um, so, I would say that you could take two routes. You could either do um, SD, EQ, Dragon Claw, Outrage. Uh, and that sounds silly, but in-game flexibility is a big... It's a really important thing to consider. And when you get into an actual game, then you're going to have all these scenarios. Man, I really need to finish this uh, Pokemon off with my Garchomp, but I don't want to lock into Outrage. Uh, and Garchomp is so good at finishing so many things off, it's not like you have a bunch of other Pokemon to pick from that could also do it. So, And sometimes you are going to need that extra power to burst through that Suicune or something. So, Dual Stab is an option. I would say if Togekiss is really getting popular, then you would have uh, good cause to use Stone Edge. Yeah. And it's not really useful for anything else. Well, maybe a weakening, a, a Gyarados, for instance, at plus one. I mean, yeah, do... it's, it's it's nice for Gyarados, but the real the reason you would use Stone Edge would really just be for, for Togekiss. Togekiss. Yeah, and I mean that's a really good reason. Uh, granted, because it's, it's you... immune to your dual stab. Yeah, um, I guess like would it also be worth running like. Poison Jab or something, because so, that would also hit Clefable super effective. My thing with Poison Jab versus that is it, it doesn't kill anyway, like defensive Clef, mm -hmm. so there's no mm -hmm. point. While well, it still does hit, obviously, that. And just the, the ground plus rock is so strong, just in coverage in general. It it's all, and it I mean, like, you would hate to not be able to kill a 40% Skarmory, right? Like, yeah. Or something like that. So I, I like, I think Stone Edge is better. Uh, I think that Earthquake hits all the other fairies besides Toekiss super hard regardless. But I'm also not against the Dragon Claw plus Outrage as well. So you, I, I honestly think we can keep that like how it is. Like I would keep it, I would keep it simple for now, simply because with the Stealth Rock weakness, then Togekiss is probably going to be something that you can play around. Yeah. Especially uh, with the, now how the Electric types are immune to Thunder Wave, which is amazing. Yeah, and Rotom's going to be really good. Um, so. You know what, uh, by the way, uh, about that Gliscor Ice Fang thing, you want to hear a disgusting calc? Go ahead, tell me. Ice Fang versus Bulkless Garchomp is not guaranteed to 2 it KO it through leftovers. That is disgusting. That's yeah, actually it, like. It's, I mean. So that, that means Garchomp with Yachi does guarantee take two. Yeah, it, it's pretty much guaranteed, but it's not 100%. It's 99.6 to get uh, 2 it KO'd by Ice Fang through lefties, which is absurd. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's 52.6 to 62.7. With, uh, so 52 to 62 without Yachi, and with Yachi, then you're taking 26 to 31. So, uh, yeah, with Yachi, then you make yourself uncounterable for... That's another reason why that, that you have Outrage, because the Outrage damage versus uh, Gliscor is significantly... Oh, it's, it's a major... Yeah, that would be the biggest reason, honestly, because uh, with Dragon Claw at plus two against a physically defensive Gliscor, then you are doing a grand total of effectively nothing. You're not, uh, it's a 3 KO with Poison Heal. Yeah. You're doing 45 to 53. And with Outrage, then you are doing a cool 68 to 80, which is, you know, even through Poison Heal. Honestly, I think Gliscor might even start doing stuff like Toxic just to uh, wear down waters. Which I don't, and think, I don't even think it can do it right now, too. Yeah, if you're running Ice Fang, then. 
uh, you're not getting through Garchomp reliably. At least with Toxic Protect, you can start stalling it around and maybe maybe dance around uh, what it's doing, but with Ice Fang, then you're just begging to lose. Yeah. I don't know. We're really, really, we're really lucky that, and... that it doesn't get... Like, we're really lucky that it does not get Toxic right now. Like, it would make... Oh, it doesn't? Yeah, oh, well... It would make Gliscor that much yeah. better. Dude, Ch Chomp? I Honestly, I think Chomp might even end up being too good. Yeah. Just because, like, all the items you can run on it, like Lum to get around, like, a Heatran Lava Plume burn or something, or, uh... Um, There's left... You could even run Leftovers it. Protect, dude. Like, Swords Dance Leftovers oh, Protect, easily. like, Terrakion back in the day. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and I think it's going to be easier to run clerics now. Yes. So like you can take a stray burn and then uh, just keep it uh, chugging for later in the game. Like you can SD and then you know outrage into a Rotom that's going to burn you and basically destroy the Rotom and then later heal that burn with uh, Dragonite or something. So yeah, that's yeah, that is brutal. Um, yeah, and even like uh, a boosting option because you know you think Garchomp's not strong enough. I'm not saying Life Orb necessarily, although that is going to be absurdly powerful. But uh, I'm also thinking just like uh, like Dragon Fang or you know Soft Sand or yeah, just anything to give that little extra foot power out power taking or the or damage. Band, yeah, anything to give that little foot out taking extra damage. I like that a lot. When we uh, so now that basis Garchomp is basically like except Garchomp's up to the imagination right now, right? I think the Yachi Berry is for sure going to be super strong because it's just going to uh, kill actually, everything. I, now I really think Life Orb might be it. Simply because it has a sixty, roughly a sixty-nine percent chance to Oko even bold Max Clefable. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Two. In the uh, so, in, so yeah, in the, in the poker paste I sent you where I did the guard stuff, I have like life orbs uh, just specifically for that in my moveset video. Yeah. Oh, well. and it, it can also uh, Oko uh, Glitch score without rage one percent of the time without yeah. rage. Yeah. yeah. That's so a big one. Um, yeah. So no matter what, Garchomp is good. So you got Garchomp, Magazone, and then uh, since. When you're running Magnazone, then you're not really looking to go, like, no switch hyper offense. You're really looking for more of an offensive team that can just kind of play the game. And I know that might sound, you know, nebulous and strange, but it's really just the way you play the game when you're not really thinking about it. You know, when you run something like hyper offense that is very specialized and, you know, you follow the, all right, I'm going to get up my rocks and then sweeper one comes in, then sweeper two comes in, and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, when you're just playing the game, then it's pretty much what you imagine competitive Pokemon to be. Uh, you see a threat, you see a Heatran, so you go to your water type. And uh, then you manage to get your big fighting type in, and you close combat and do some damage. And you're doing a lot of switching around back and forth, but it's not like you're switching around playing defense for the sake of playing defense. You're not playing to wear the opponent down. You're playing to survive long enough so that you can win with your offensive pokes. It's what is called bulky offense. Yep. And uh, when you've got the Garchomp Magnezone combo, then you're generally going for bulky offense. So uh, what you're going to want is, you're not going to want to just go Garchomp plus five defensive Pokemon, because when you run offense, the one thing you really don't want to do is uh, go overboard on the defensive stuff. Uh, you don't want your mindset to be when you're team building. I right, have well, to be able to switch I'm... into this, this, and this. Exactly. Yeah, that's 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 poison. You just need a means yeah. to deal with them. That's it. Yeah. yeah, you have to play around things more than perfectly counter them. Now, I'm not saying that you can't have... You need to switch into something. You know, you can't say, oh, it's an offensive team, so it's okay that I can't switch into Lucario's close combat. That, nothing like that. But you also don't need to have a perfect long-term Lucario counter. As long as you can switch into it a couple times, that should be enough. And if you go into building an offense team like this is shaping up to be, with the mindset of, oh, well, now I need a counter to this, so I'll add insert defensive Pokemon. Oh, special attackers are scary, I guess I'll use Blissey. You know, not to say that those Pokemon can't work, but they should be doing something more than just uh, being there for defensive security. Because the purpose of your team is offense, so you should be looking for... Pokemon that can fulfill an offensive defensive niche. So uh, something like this is why uh, Heatran is so good for example because it's really scary offensively but it also switches in on everything. every typing every it single typing. Million, it gets a million opportunities to be annoying. You know if Heatran was this good offensively but it didn't really you know if it was basically Rampardos which you know is really scary if it gets a free turn but it also gets free turns on nothing so it's not really that scary. 
you know, that would be a different story. But it's another reason why uh, something like Gliscor is so scary. It switches in on everything, so you don't you have to switch into it, you know, uh, over the course of a game. And when your counters are worn down and exploitable, then it will outlast you. So uh, something like an offensive team with Garchomp and Magazone, you're not trying to play the long game. You know, the longer the game goes. J not a hard rule, a general rule. You don't want the game to be going forever because if a defensive player is really taking you into a really deep game, then you are probably getting out last. Yeah, they have the advantage because but, uh, their Pokemon are just bulkier overall. Yeah, exactly. So you want to be Matt. You you want to be able to switch into those uh, Scarf Heatran Fire Blasts, but you also don't need to switch into them infinitely. You yeah, don't to, yeah, you don't need to listen. So. As long uh, as when you can do it, you can take something back from them after they've done exactly. that type of damage, that's, you get some. That's the it's equivalent exchange, it. but you want you want it to be in your favor, right? So exactly. Um, here's a really good example. Let's say my opponent has gone to a ground type that isn't Garchomp against uh, my Heatran. So against this ground type, I go to Rotom Wash. Rotom Wash switches into the Earthquake, no problem. And in return, uh, Rotom Wash threatens out that ground type. So I use Volt Switch, and as a result of my defensive play, I am now in an opportunity to where I Volt Switch out of the opposing Grass type and bring my Heatran back in for another Assault. So when it's best when your defensive play manages to... Obviously, you can't force this, but it is best when whenever you go on the defensive side, then you are able to get offense back. And if you don't have a Switch move, which is the quickest and easiest way to do it, then you can just make up for it by double switching. Let's say you go to your Swamper and you don't have Flip Turn, so rather than using Flip Turn, you know, you're forcing out that Heatran locked into Fire Blast, maybe you double switch to your Dragonite against the Grass type switching in, and then you have a good... Uh, which is which is actually a relatively low one. which is a relatively low risk play as well because you switch into Heatran too. And this is actually going to be exactly. interesting too because now we have team preview. So before we were doing it based on instinct, based on what we saw with team, what they had in team composition, now you're actually going to be able to do it like you would in any other game. I also want to note, exactly. like Perry Magnuson, we mentioned that it's good offensively as a partner because it gets rid of Skarmory and depending to a lesser extent, Bronzong. Uh, which I think we should actually make this. We'll 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 talk about it in a sec. But um, but also defensively, like and this is just basic Pokemon knowledge, right? What is Garchomp weak to? Ice and Dragon. What is Magnezone resist? Ice, Dragon, and Fairy, which is also what Garchomp is weak to too, um, as well as like a, a plethora of other things uh, that Magnezone can end up taking. So, yeah. the biggest uh, example is going to be with uh, if you have Chomp one on one against Clef. Then you can go to Magnazone and just eat up Moonblast all day. You don't fear T-Wave. I mean, as long as you don't get Flamethrower yeah. on the Switch a bunch of times. But the end, uh, what spec? I don't think this tier is good. Well, Hidden Power is not available, so never mind. Swampert switches into Specs Magnazone pretty nicely. Yeah, we also, but, uh, well, though we don't know like if Hidden Power, because there are two Pokemon with Hidden Power currently. Like I said, Smeargle and I believe Unknown. But with Pokemon Home, we don't know if Hidden Power is actually going to be allowed here. Because remember, from Pokemon Home, you can bring Pokemon from Pashkins. So if it's already coded into the game, maybe they'll be able to use it. We don't know if they're actually going to erase it. Well, for now, Specs Magnazone looks like it threatens everything that isn't Swampert. And yeah. even Swampert doesn't exactly heal well. So I don't exactly. Think you, and it's and it's going to want to run uh, physical defense. So if you hit it with a couple Specs Flash Cannon, you do like thirty percent every time. Like you know, like yeah. I do also want to so, note that besides Specs, the other option that I also like, though I, I am leaning towards Specs as well, is Magnet Rise, Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, and Flash Cannon. Considering Magnezone doesn't have a fourth move that can really go for besides Tri Attack or Hyper Beam, there's no body press for Magnezone. Uh, what Magnet Rise allows you to do is beat Earthquake Bronzong, which would also open up Garchomp. But we don't have to. We don't have to do it that route. Obviously. The only reason I would um, I would lean away from that is because Specs Volt Switch is already going to be so strong. strong. Yeah. And I also don't think that uh, Zong is going to be used very much, uh, simply because, like we already established, it's not a good Garchomp answer. It is so, a good Mamoswine answer though. That's yeah. Mamoswine doesn't get a knockoff yet, does nope, it? No knockoff. That's going to be disgusting. But uh, for now, okay, yeah, that's fair. And uh, speaking of, that, room, uh, that's another piece of uh, synergy. You know, what's scary so far? Dragons, right? So Mamoswine also loves Skarm and Zong going down. Yep. And this is another classic pairing. So you can go Chomp, Mamoswine, Magazone, 
That's a really good start to a team already. And uh, you can put rocks on Mammo if you like. Exactly. You can do a lot of things. I don't personally like rocks on Mammo, so unless it's Lee, just it, it because... It feels like a waste. Yeah, it's right. a base 130 but... attacking mon. You want to be doing damage with it, personally. Mm. But uh, another thing to keep, consider as well, that Oblivious is buffed, so it's immune to Intimidate and Taunt. So if we did lose, use it as a lead, you know, for like Azoth mm. and stuff, we could put Stealth Rock Oblivious on. Oblivious is uh, immune to Intimidate now? Yeah, they buffed that in Gen 8. Obliv I knew it was immune to Taunt, but that's... Wow. But well, there's not really a, there's good. not a lot um, of intimidate Pokemon in the game, right? There's no Incineroar, there's no Landorus, right? Star Raptor, mm. but I mean, you want to use Reckless Star Raptor if you're gonna use a Star Raptor. That's true. Oh my God, Reckless Star Raptor is going to be a dream. Uh, well, anyway, so we have uh, Mamo. We have now we what we have to do is uh, start looking at our matchups against some other common Pokemon because right now nothing we have really wants to go one on one with uh, what I think are gonna be some the stables of the tier like Star uh, the bulky water. Yeah. Um, so Rotom Wash, Rotom is a water type in this tier, just feels wrong. Uh, Rotom Wash, Swampert, Suicune, uh, even Starmie. Uh, so you're, we want something that can actually switch, something just generally defensively sturdy. Uh, something that can switch into waters, something that can provide some team utility. Uh, something that can ideally uh, keep us, keep us in, going in the offensive direction. Uh, so I'm not saying that, you know, Blissey is bad, but, you know, it does get Healing Wish, so. Um, <laughs> if we did do oh, yeah, Blissey, we could... We could... buff now, which is awesome. Yeah, it's not, like, crappy. Just, just when you thought you survived Garchomp, here it comes again. You know, it's crazy, um, though. Blissey's not a Starmie switcher, though, if they Psy Shock once on like, the analytic oh boost. Oh, my God. Uh, Starmie with no Pursuit and Psy Shock? It's oh my crazy, goodness. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think at this point, then, we might really benefit... Well, we might benefit from a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, a lot of... We're, we're, want... we're in Fernape week, too, so, like, a Latias or yeah. our own Starmie could help us out in that yeah, situation. Yeah, we're really, we're really uh, scary offensively, but our defense... I mean, we have some decent defensive synergy. Wait, does Mamoswine not get Thick Fat, by the way? It does. We can use Thick Fat. Oh, okay. I just I didn't do we anything because we, we haven't finished Magnezone's EV spread and its last move, and we haven't mm. really added... I mean, obviously, we're going to have... If we have Mammo, then I think we should probably go with Magnet Rise, simply because that Bronzong thing is a much bigger deal now. That's what I'm thinking as well. So, like, that would be oh, like... Uh, Mamoswine is also really important because... What does it destroy? Gliscor. Yep, it destroys Gliscor. Okay. It, it so... does still have access to Icicle Crash as well, which is cool because Swallow oh, gets it yeah. as a move. So Ice Shard's good for opposing yeah. dragons, which threaten us too. Obviously, we're not going to get uh, Does it get Superpower? It, uh, let me just check super quickly. Again, guys, we're doing this before it gets out on Showdown, so we can't actually scroll down on Showdown just yet, so I'm looking at a pace spin on the side. Um, I see... I think I actually saw it on Swinon's moveset as a, as an egg move, but, uh, I see Freeze Dry, which is an interesting option for Rotom. Oh my god, Freeze Dry memo in this tier, what is happening? Yeah, uh, put that on because suddenly we're going from annoyed by Swampert to mildly inconvenienced by yep. it. Yep. Yeah. If it's oh physically my. defensive, it comes in like on an ice or like an icicle crash. Oh, we kill yeah. it freeze it, drop. It's, it's dropping. It's dropping. I do like also that. want to note that I think in that situation we always go life orb just for the added. You actually need a life orb in order to knock out Ice oh, Core in order to knock out Garchomp. Life orb Mammo was a crime. Um, icicle plate, if anything. If we get some, if, if we get really, some calcs from it, if we get some decent yeah, see, calcs. The thing is about team building is like if we get out on well on the Wi-Fi battles, it's finder I guess, not the latter. Uh, but if you are if you're playing around with your team, and you see oh well you know my Infernape is getting played around with Life Orb recoil, maybe I should try something else. Then you can try it. You know this is not going to be first draft is fixed. Uh, so, you know, you might want to experiment with a different item on Garchomp, or you, you know, you might even want, uh, we didn't even consider that. Garchomp could easily be our rocker, it, because it's so good that it can rocks and SD, and SD. without losing effectiveness. Yep, yep. Because it's going to get so many free turns early in the game. So. And that's just, that's just something, like, we'll look at when we're revising the team at the end. Obviously, again, also, exactly. no, term is per no team is perfect at all, right? Mm. No team is perfect, exactly. so revise, test, see what you want. I actually do not mind the Icicle Plate. As long as we're still doing the damage to like Swamper. This is another thing you do in team building, which is damage calcing. So damage I'll... calc is the greatest tool you have for improvement. Yep. Just I can't stress it enough. I'm gonna do a quick self plug. I have a video called Three Tools to Make You a Better Battler. And if you are if if you really wanna improve, then I recommend it because uh, in it then I go over 
Well, the damage calc is one of those three tools, but I cannot stress enough just how useful it is. Because so many players will just go, oh, I'm, I'm going to you know eyeball the damage roll, and then they'll be surprised that they KO'd some, that they were uh, KO'd by something, or that they didn't KO something, when they easily could have known for sure. Yep. You know, Pokemon is a game of information, and the damage calc tells you so, 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 so much. So, uh, yeah, check out that video. But even if you don't, use the damage count. You guys should check out Kevin's a lot of videos. Uh, one thing that I'm Thanks noticing right here lot. is I put in uh, Icicle Plate, and, like, obviously uh, we could go... if by, by going Adamant Nature, which is still minus special attack... Um, I think you would probably want to go with... Life. Uh, well, Life Orb or... If you're gonna go adamant and go life orb, here's here's the thing though. Here's the thing, Kevin. In general, Kev. I think you might want to go like a minus defensive. Nature. Yeah, but we can avoid um, that because we use a damage calc. If we go jolly life orb, it, it's a guarantee to a KO on physically defensive swapper. Like mm -hmm. if we if but versus icicle play. Well, and I think jolly is a good speed tier because adamant Lucario, timid heat uh, That's uh, shattering my exactly. Now, now, as you see the life orb I, I damage. Hate, uh, I hate Jolly, but I admit it might yeah, be necessary. It, it, it might be best here, but if we go, we don't have to sacrifice defenses, which actually makes a little bit of a difference versus maybe a random, extre uh, not extreme speed, but like a random I would, priority uh, move. I would calc freeze dry against Rotom. That's a big that one. Would be, that would be what my uh, big yeah. thing about I, w I think we could go minus Spadef there. Let me see. For the purpose of really smacking Rotom, because that's going to be like one of two answers to it yeah we'll just go max hp just to figure out the calc so as you can see right here we have 40 41 to 49 percent to so that's a two hit kill with uh, but, you know see see how much of a difference it's gonna make see if we go naive it does 46 yeah. to 54 so it's honestly not that huge of a difference if we have rocks up anyway maybe maybe but i feel like we could uh fine tune the evs i mean we can do that at the end yeah but in general i think uh it's not go you don't want mammoth wine taking special attacks so it, it's generally going to be uh, best if you have that big, big uh, smack option for those games where you know things are decided by small percentages all the time. So uh, yeah, I think I, I, I would go with naive or or naughty if we uh, if we end up going that that's, yeah if we end up going like I said. So again, in that situation, I do like the mana rise. I do like Thunderbolt Volt Switch. Um, yeah, and we'll absolutely. be adding more things as we go, but I'm actually leaning also towards just to help us out from some added insurance, right? If you have an Inferno Thought versus you, they're most likely to go for Close Combat versus the inaccurate Fire Blast, right? So Chopple Berry is an option on the set if we don't want to go Leftovers. Uh, you can go Chopple, you can go um, Shuka, maybe if you want to like make sure you live a Zong EQing you on the yeah, Switch. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, something like that. There's a lot of options. So we'll, really. we'll, again, we'll, we'll solidify certain things as we're going. Uh, leftovers yeah, is that's always good too. Thing in team building, you don't have to decide everything right away. You can come back to it. Yep. Like that's right what that's you see. We're le not... we're leaving things like. Yeah, the right choice might not uh, come to you until you have more members of the team. So you don't have to figure it out. Uh, if, if anything, I would say that that would be a mistake to you know stick with one Magnezone set that you decided before you even have the rest of the team. Exactly. Uh, so another, another okay, cool so, little option is like Custap too for like plus two outrage. We get the flash cannon uh, into another flash cannon. So there's there's a lot of things. Like in this situation, if this was a tournament and I did run leftovers, I'd calc for like Clefable at plus one moon blast or like things like mm -hmm. that. But uh, yeah, keep, exactly. feel, feel free to keep going. Obviously, we already have uh, our okay, own set on so line. And now this. I'm going to draw on my Gen Four instincts. So for an offensive team, so uh, we know that we have to handle bulky waters in general, and there are also some other moves, just common offensive moves that you want to be able to switch into. Uh, Garchomp is a good, you know, Pokemon to switch into fire moves, but you're gonna want something else. You don't want your sweeper being the only thing standing between you and Heatran. That's generally asking for a bad time. So water, fire. And then some other common moves. Uh, Joey mentioned Mix Ape, which is absolutely right, which terrorizes us right now. Uh, and close combat in general. Yep. Like I would not want to switch into Lucario. Bro, a freaking a freaking, uh, uh, freaking Scarf Star Raptor is scary too. You know, we could deal exactly, with it. Exactly. Exactly. But it's... Uh, or Machamp even. Oh my um, gosh, dude. Oh yeah, Luke. Is, Luke is going to be a really nasty because it's got Steel Stab for uh, fairies. the fairies, yeah. uh, and it's a fighting type. And it's got Ice Punch for a score. So I think Luke is going to be kind of like a sleeper pick for a while, but it's definitely going to... It has a different thing. Anyway, you want uh, close combat coverage, 
you want fire and water move coverage, and another thing is that, of course, you want something to switch into none other than Earthquake. Uh, because it's not just Garchomp. Now, I don't think Flygon is going to be completely obsolete in this meta. I think Scar because... it gets Dragon Dance, and Scarf is going to be decent, too. Oh, um, does it already get Dragon Dance? Yep. It's an egg move. Oh, well, that's, or it's a... that's one thing. Yeah. But even just a Scarf with a U-turn, because it has an EQ immunity itself... And you don't want, it's a generally good rule, don't get cleaned up by Scarf Flygon EQing you late game. So we got to cover some some big types here. We got to cover EQ, CC, uh, and then fire and water of all sorts. So this is where we start looking into our you know bulky, tanky options. We don't need to go full resist, because if you only do things by resist, then you're going to be, uh, that's a very flawed approach, because... Uh, easy example. Okay, well, I have a fire resist here that's weak to fighting, and I have a fighting resist here that's weak to, um, what's it called? Fire. You know, T-Tar resists fire really well, but if the only thing standing between you and fire attacks is a T-Tar, then Mix Inferno <laughs> is just gonna is click really close comment right after. Part. Yep. So, um, you, you have to be conscientious of the Pokemon in the tier, and sometimes it's just generally good to use bulk. I mean, yes, Swampert does have great resists because its typing is so good, but part of the reason its typing is so good is because, number one, it's really bulky, and number two, it's neutral to everything. So, the Pokemon like T-Tar and uh, Swampert, they can generally plug holes uh, where just through sheer bulk and neutralities. So, it, it's hard to uh, find exactly... You know, there is no such thing as a true mixed Infernape counter. So, it's going to very much be a matter of uh, having the speed and resistances and kind of temerity to play yeah. around it. I was actually, so, uh, one thing I was looking at as well, just because we have a lot of Muns, we get Scarberry, these guys weaken Rotom and stuff. Uh, something that also helps us with threats and still keeps up offensive momentum is actually a Choice Band Scizor, which still gets Bullet Punch right now. Mm. Oh, so, classic. Yeah, so like those oh, are just like... Oh, that is such a classic. Yeah, they're, they're just potential uh, options for uh, the team. I don't think I we was get... thinking the combination of Starmie and Dragonite might be good. They both cover water and fire. Dragonite is not a, uh, is not an EQ answer because uh, it's weak to Dragon, but it at least is an EQ immunity, which is helpful. Both of them resist fighting, too. And uh, Starmie, as we've established, is going to be a massive Yeah, pain. we're keeping up that, especially with the analytic, oh my gosh. But we're keeping and up that And what's really offensive. good is that these pokes are not, um, they're defensively useful, but they're also offensively threatening. Incredible, yeah. And so you have, a, you have a good balance. What's also really nice here is that I think this team is going to be so fast, and with Dragonite, uh, does d not get E-Speed? So that's something i got to check right now. I'm actually checking right now just because... If it does, then I don't think we need a Scar for last, and that's really nice because that gives us some flexibility. Yeah, yeah, because I was actually looking at... It does. Dratini gets Egg Move, Extreme right. Speed. Let's freaking go. That's outstanding. So uh, with this... God, I want to put a Metagross on here so bad. I know, dude. I want to put, making... put Metagross. I want to put freaking... Like I said, I, I like Scizor. Uh, uh, I mean, Metagross would be so good, but talk about making your you know ground weakness worse. Um, I want to put I want to Scarf Flygon as well. If we didn't if we didn't add any think, of these guys, I think we need a second Dragon answer, honestly, because right now we have Magnezone and then Mamo in Revenge. But hmm. see, this is where it gets tough because this is where you really see how Dragon and Ground are such great well, stab combinations. Remember how we talked about? Remember how we talked about? Like, not to interrupt, but. Remember how we talked about how, like, Bronzong is an interesting Pokemon? Mm -hmm. Because it deals defensively with certain things, though it's still not the best. It actually fits here. It kind of does. Very well. Um, and it's cool because this is actually, this is standard drag bag, dude. We got the Mamoswine, we got the Magnezone, we got our second Steel type. Uh, and then we mm -hmm. also have, like, our two Dragons, our Starmie Spinner. The other option is also uh, does, Jirachi um, is an option, too, but it doesn't it get does Gengar? Does Gengar have Levitate still, or does it go no, Curse Body? No, it's Curse Body. Levitate would have well, been Well, that, that's actually not bad. I mean, it's not good here, but it's not bad because at least it picks up T-Spikes. Yeah. And yeah. that's a new option yeah. for Rose stuff. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just looking for uh, bulk options that can help with drag. I mean, honestly, you know what also fits really well here is Togekiss. Togekiss ain't bad. Either, yeah. Well, actually, I guess it's a question of do you want Togekiss or do you want Dragonite? Um, I kind of want Dragonite because it's less likely to get overwhelmed by Infernape, and we can actually revenge it with extreme speed. That's true. 
Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's true. Um, and if he goes out, because you know, obviously, you know, the biggest threat to us, I yeah, Tokyo like, also Draco. doesn't really help with the uh, the fire thing at all. Yeah, really well. It, uh, I, I guess we could do both theoretically, but you know, I, even with Starmie doing something cool, like I had in mind, like Trick and uh, Trick Specs with Spin and yeah. like Psy Shock, I think because I think that set's really good, but. It also, um, that, you know, just the two Stealth Rock weeks just kind of bugs yeah, me. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. I think so, if Boots were an option, it was a thing. Uh, does, uh, do, do any of the Rotom, does Rotom get Defog? It, I'm going to check right now. Because Defog is a TM, so it might still get it. I don't remember how Rotom got Defog. I'm pretty sure it was, de it was in this generation Rotom got Defog, right? So it should still. No, it was Gen 7. It was, it was Gen 7? Oh. It was in a tutor, yeah. Ooh. Then, I, think, anyway. I see... I still see nasty plot, but oh my god, it gets nasty plot. Yeah, it still gets nasty <laughs> plot, but I don't see uh, defog as an option. Oh I'm my god, does Gengar plot. get nasty plot too? <laughs> Crazy, bro. Now Gengar always got nasty plot since last generation, so it should have still nasty plot as well. Oh really? Okay. Well, let's let's. Uh, well, right. It got it in Gen Eight, rather. Let's see. Actually, oh shoot, I don't see nasty plot for Gengar. Uh, That's probably a good thing, honestly. Oh, I get right, it. Nope, well, I see it. I see it. I get it. <laughs> all right. That's even more uh, reason that we thinking... need Starmie for the speed tier. Period. Yes, that's another really big thing. So you you have a good combination of uh, natural speed through Chomp and Starmie, and then you have Mamo and D Knight with great priority. I'm just thinking some form of Rotom would be really nice, just because yeah. it's a it's a bulky catch all Pokemon, and it um has great resists. If this was current so, DVP, do. Yeah, honestly, like, I, like Rotom Mo seems really nice. Yeah, I was like, I was looking at that Leaf Storm too. Uh, the other option is that if this was current DBP OTR Trick Room, uh, OTR Bronzong looks incredible in this team yeah, too. Yeah, stupid boom nerf. Oh, actually, Rotom Mo is perfect because it uh, devours all water types. Yep, really nice. I thing. like that. I like that set. Yeah, we could even run. Uh, what do you think? Trick Scarf, Defensive Specs. Depending on the that, star. I really don't know. I guess Trick Scarf is nice because then you have two Trick Pokemon, so you're messing up anything defensive. And uh, you can go fast. You know, you can keep the Scarf or you can unload it. And uh, yeah, I don't know if going defensive is the move. I don't think so. I think, no, I think too early in the metagame, no. Yeah, I think you just want to have as much speed and offense as possible uh, for now. One thing about so, Rotom yeah, is like, that the uh, flag on... Switch, trick. Honestly, you don't even need anything else. Just Volt Switch, Trick, uh, Leaf Storm, and Thunderbolt. Volt Switch. Trick. So I see the Rotom forms here, and there's stuff, but I don't see, like... I don't. What I don't see on them is the... Uh, these moves, but there's no way they would have Rotom being grass and whatever and not be able to get it gets a signature move when it changes typing, so My... Yeah, I I will have to like uh wait and see in the game, but there is There's no way. <laughs> like like you're not gonna let me there have was, an There's zero chance that they bring back the Rotom forms and like, oh yeah, so this is your uh you know, overheatless Rotom heat. Yeah, like you know, what? What would that be? Will O is your fire type attack. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's gonna have it. I mean, worst case, I guess we could replace it with. Well, I mean, it, even if it doesn't have Leaf Storm, then it'll still be annoying with Will O Wisp and stuff. But I no, there's no way this thing doesn't have. I agree. That. I agree completely. Um, I guess it's not. The one reason to go um, bulky would be just to make yourself a little more sturdy against like Latias and such. Who I guess we can be a little soft against. Yeah, that's that's like the thing. Like I said, like that's why Bronzong would fit. In oh, that. I know, but it's so. Passive. Too bad we can't just put Choice Scarf Heat trying to explode on them anymore. You know. I know. Uh, honestly, hmm. yes, yeah, is tough. Uh, that uh, you want that. Honestly, I wonder if Skarmory wouldn't be too bad. No, it's Spid not. Spidef Skarm. Spidef Skarm. I if, mean, if it's Aka, we could have Brain Bird for Inferno too, but. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be pretty awesome. Um, God, Togekiss ticks so many boxes over. Hmm. If we have Togekiss over D Knight, it, it, well, see, because half the reason I like D Knight was um, was because it had that uh, extra like water. Well, yeah. Then we only well no we have Garchomp. To, 
No, yeah, kind of like Togekiss over D Knight if, if we have the speed of Rotom. We if, don't need a E speed priority as much if our last is a Scarfer. Okay, then our last also has to be something that matches up well versus Heatran and like Infernape. Mm -hmm. So maybe that already puts us with Flagon as our offensive check yeah, to everything. Maybe, maybe it is Flagon. I guess we're worse against Waters in a nutshell, but a Magazine doesn't get toxic yet, right? No, unfortunately. No. Well, I guess Swampert's not the worst thing here. Um, man, what about like, uh, what about like Roserade, like Scarf Roserade? Ooh. Yeah, so, I think it would work. Let's see what Roserade gets at the moment. Because Roserade isn't a bad option. It's nice, it's uh, good. Well, this is actually leaning towards uh, a different style of team, which is pretty interesting. It still gets spikes, which is cool as well. Well, uh, oh, that's a big thing. Does Rose have its, because uh, I know its stats got buffed in Gen 6 and then Gen 7 again, I think. So is it like buffed Rose Raid? It's like 60, 70, 65, 125. Wait, yeah. wait, what's its uh, defense stat? 65. Oh, yes, this is buffed Rose Raid. Yeah, okay, that's really good. And uh, does it, here's the big thing. Does it, in uh, Gen 4, then you can't have Sleep Powder and you can have Spikes. Sleep, you can have Sleep Powder and Spikes. Yeah, you can do it. Oh, that's going to be dirty. Oh my god. Okay, so I'm envisioning for this Roserade, uh, just Sleep Powder, Spikes, Leaf Storm, and Sludge Bomb. Like a weird Greninja. So Sleep Powder, Spikes, okay. Mm, yeah, because Spikes makes everything better. I remember the point where I used to run Shadow Ball and Roserade for like my Gengar and like my... Uh... Of course. Extra sensory for the yep. fighting types. Yep, yep, yep. Sleep Powder, Spikes, Leaf Storm. You want to make this guy Scarf? Yeah, yeah. Also, if this team is terrible, it's not our fault. Literally never played a game of this tier. So... These are just basic team building things. Like I said, we're going to have more. We're going to have more team building stuff. I mean, it has the tools to win, right? Also, it looks really cool, and that's really the most important thing. I have this theory, which is not scientific at all, but good-looking teams definitely win more often, you know? <laughs> Sometimes you make a team and you don't have uh, many blue Pokemon on it, and then you're like, whoa, I'm weak to Heatran. Who could have seen this coming? Not enough blue Pokemon, that's why. So, uh, yeah, this team is a healthy blend of colors covering all uh, all spectrums. And, yeah, god, the synergy is through the roof here. No, the synergy is really, really nice. Uh, we don't have rocks, though, which is pretty big, and heavy duty boots. I, I, I do think, oh, we can just chuck it on uh, Chomp, honestly. Over Dragon Claw we can make or it, Outrage? We, uh... I guess Outrage. Like, if we give it lefties, then we make it more of a team player. Uh, but Yachi helps us so much more in what we need. Like, I know. I mean, Starby's uh, still a pain for us to switch it to, you know? Yeah. And it's not like we Starby. can't... We can go Magazone on the one Ice Beam and then pivot into Rose right after, obviously. Mm. But... Yeah, Assault Vest would be really nice. Yeah, Assault Vest would be a, a great item to have. Because we can use Miracle on Heatran 2 for... Uh, for a oh, Magazone do Heatran. To, uh, do we have to go Gastrodon to deal with Starby? Is it Storm Drain is buffed and stuff now, so I don't want it to be. I don't. I don't want our team no, to become what it's not, though. You know. No, I know. I'm just thinking like, well, now that I think about it, Starmie is kind of ridiculous. Is <laughs> a Life Orb Starmie is another thing that kind of got knocked out of the Gen Four meta game, like Infernape style, just because it gets KO'd for Life Orb and Sand. Yeah, pursuit. And now you know you don't have that, and it has Psy Shock. I'm just thinking, ooh, this thing is kind of annoying. Sucks that ours has to have Rapid Spin on it because. No. Cause like our uh, like hydro pump, ice beam. Like I would rather just go all attack and obviously you want your yeah. Uh, I don't beat. know. I, I like uh, I like tricks. Uh, well, maybe we just want uh, three attacks. Yeah. Okay. No, I take it back. At this point, I think we just want three attacks. Spin. Yeah. Is hydro spin T bolt spin uh, hydro spin bolt beam is just so good. Also, uh, spin um, gets the speed boost, so uh, we... Oh my god, it does. That's why Garchomp has oh to be my... Yachi, 100%. Oh my god. Yo, I'm putting Custodet Barry on Magazone. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you know... But does it get Endure? It does get Endure. We can use that over Magnet Rise, but then the Bronzong weakness... Look yeah, at Bronzong. I would use it over Sub, I think. I don't have Sub, though. I have Thunderbolt, Volt oh. Switch, Flash Can. You want me to get rid of uh, Volt Switch? Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can get rid of Volt Switch. I guess. It's yeah, tough. Yeah, I guess without without specs, then you're not threatening. Um, uh, without specs, you're not threatening the ground like uh, Gliscor enough with Flash Cannon. So you uh, actually can't Volt Switch as much. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, without if it was specs, then yes. But, yeah, I think we'd really need Endure over uh, Volt Switch here. I agree. This is going to be fun. How much speed? We definitely oh, want to be faster be. than... Uh... Maybe we have to use Pasho Mamoswine. <laughs> no. No, I know. That's, that's too much. But, you know, the Starmie thing. Maybe we have to use Wacken Starmie. <laughs> Shoot. I don't want to make our Starmie worse just because we're that scared. I feel like... Well, I know, I know. It's, I think it should be uh, something offense. Well, because uh, the resist berries are offensive items. Yeah, they are. They are. Yeah, so it's... Because, like, it's going to be threatening no matter what. Oh, my God, it even has analytic now. That's what I was saying. I put analytic um, on it over natural cure. For those that don't know, like, analytic, it says the Pokemon attacks have 1.3 point power if it's the last move to move in a turn, but it also works when your opponent switches. So if they switch, the Pokemon come in and takes an analytic hit. This is going to be so fun in, like, two weeks to build another uh, team together. And, like, just... Oh, my God. Like, see how the metagame is settled. Guys, again, we're going we're gonna to try and do these really... Like, this is a more offensively based team. Do you like Life Hormone Army? Do you want to put Walk on them to be safe? Or... Oh... Thing is, dude, if we get hit... Better idea to just go Life Orb right off the bat. That's what I'm thinking, just, bro. If uh, we get hit with an analytic yeah. Hydro Pump ourselves, like, we're gonna die to Thunderbolt anyway. Yeah, yeah. The real question is, um, what's our Togekiss set? Yeah, that's, uh... That's also why I like the Dragonite, bro. I'm, I'm, I think we make a choice ban Dragonite, dude, and just say screw it, because that Extreme Speed versus Starmie... Oh, that's true. God, why is Starmie the greatest? And plus, we have multi-skill um, on Dragonite, dude. Like, oh, that's true. Why did I want to? Oh, uh, the, oh that's the thing. Dragon moves. Yeah. Uh, that's why I really wanted Togekiss. Well, we could always still go Bronze on as last year, and then oh, and then no, Dragon. Oh no! Oh, that just feels so wrong. Also, I went. I meant some seats for Scarm, but I'm not sure how much speed we actually need to hit in this meta. Uh I would. J well, you don't need to go max because that just. Um, I would give it enough for like zero speed Suicunes and Rotoms. So like in that 210 area. Yeah, that's, that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, with 210, you also outrun max speed Machamp. Perfect. So that's nice. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll put the rest in HP. There we go. So we, we have options versus things. Like this is also decent versus like, uh, again, a boosted Garchomp or... I really wish you yeah, could run Cust have Explosion, okay, dude. I, I am kind of leaning back towards Dragonite. The only thing I'm really afraid of is, um... Oh, man, I don't know. I can't, Now I want, like, Togekiss and D-Knight, even though I know it's so flawed. It's just, uh... But it helps us It helps us not lose to, like, that. I actually like Togekiss D-Knight, too. And, no, uh, but... Uh, waters are... Oh, no, they're not so bad. I would rather deal with waters than be unable to switch into, like, dragon moves yeah, and stuff. Yeah, Because we can't just have Magnezone as a resist. Bro, and, the cho and choice, band, choice Band Dragonite can do a lot of damage to that, too. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm now have just realizing how stupid Specs Latias is going to be yeah. in a tier where you can't no pursuit. pursue it. <laughs> There's no Corvelite either. Like, he trends, but that's going to be a thing. Nothing to block trick. Oh, my God. Um... This is, this is the team of the dilemma, guys. This is the team of the dilemma. Last time for Sword and Shield, we built a rain team because it didn't matter what our opponent had. We always had speed options versus something. Exactly. This one is offense for DP. Um, I okay. I think uh, I think D Knight Togekiss might actually be it. I mean, it does really suck that. Can we not go like? We could go Spadef Clive. I was just gonna say, can we go like Life Orb Clef or something? Yeah, I actually like Clefable a little bit better. Um, I uh, it feels so wrong to put Clef on this kind of team, and then I realize it's it's it has actual stab now. It's a fairy. Yeah. So yeah, Moonblast Clef might act, or yeah, like Life Orb Clef might actually be really good. Status absorbs too against annoying Rotom, which is really big. I I, I don't mind Dragonite Clef. Oh, that's really good. Actually. Dude, I mean, he, Combine Clef also just looks scary with the fact that, like, again, the with steel touch. Combine, uh, if you do Combine Ice Beam, yeah. Yeah. So we have Magic Guard is confirmed. We can have Wish. We can have Moonlight. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I guess that. Well, I guess Moonlight. Well, Moonlight's fine because this is an offensive team. Yeah, so. I mean, as you can see, guys, we don't switch into Mammoth Swine, but nothing switches into Mammoth Swine that's not Skarmory or Bronzong anyway, so it's whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and once home comes out, not even Bronzong. <laughs> yep. 
I, I guess Rotom Wash does technically, but uh, you know. Oh, we're oh, smacking wait, that no, with freeze dry. Yeah, because it gives us freeze dry. Yep. <laughs> oh, my. oh, this is gonna be a, a riot. Um, I would just give Clef, uh, you know, the UU approach. Max HP, max special attack. No, that's probably much. The EVs you can kind of just ballpark, honestly. It's. Um, are we going? Yeah. Are we? Are we guaranteed going? Uh, life orb. Maybe not. Yeah, maybe you do want some because it's not like. Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, the reason I like life orb is that it lets you actually threaten guard chomp with moon blast. If we go ice beam. We probably still well, need... it has Yachi, but with uh, Life Orb Moon, Moon Blast, Blast you actually do it, yeah. Because it's not going to be running Roselli. Give me a Calc Life Orb. Yeah, Life Orb Moon Blast, I mean, it's not a KO, but it does 81 to 97, roughly. So, you know, rocks, a little bit of chip. And that's not... So that's with zero special... That's with no special attack investment, too. So, so. if we did, if we actually do this as well, we don't have to run Freeze Dry on, on Mammoth Sign, because we have... I still would, honestly, just because I don't think it has any other... Uh, any better moves to be running sub and it's just it's just so it? nice to have yeah, that yeah. option now now you have flexibility you can either just pretend like you don't have it and then later on when you get them in KO range then you just drop them and uh, otherwise then you have Clef to yeah I guess Clefable does solve all issues <laughs> it's just what EV spread do we want because do we go special defensive so we can um, deal with Starmie I think I think, like, everything else, we're going to be leaning towards physical defense for now. Because, like, like in Auras, then Bold Life Orb is a good set. So we could, um... Go a little yeah, bit I mean, speed. The thing is that it's flexible. You can generally, like, run a good mix of defense and special defense. Because it's, like, uh, with Spadef Clef, then even Spadef does not switch into analytic life. No, not at all. I remember, yeah. though, that Calm 56 was enough for Mega Manetric as well as Starmie when you Calm Mind. And that mm. also also happens to be the Dragapult benchmark as well as, like, Hydreigon and stuff, which aren't in the, meta, in the game. If Starmie didn't have, um... Analytic, then it would be enough for two life orb hits. But with analytic, then it just barely gets uh, pushed through. So, uh, yeah, I, th yeah, I think uh, physical defense because you're generally using it for bulk anyway, yeah. rather than like hard countering. Are we gonna call mine on this bad boy? Are we gonna do like moonblast ice beam? Like, that's an interesting question. It might be like the meta game might be too offensive for to win. That's what I'm thinking too. Like I was thinking like if we do this. You know, Ice Beam just in case. It's all, obviously, this is our Gliscor oh, yeah, you killer. You definitely want Ice Beam. You don't want to get... You don't want to be... Because this gives you, like, a perfect Gliscor answer. Yeah, and we can also yeah, go, like... Beam, that's what I'm saying. Moonlight might be nice. That's what I'm thinking or as well. You, uh, well, Moonlight helps with Gara, which is always obnoxious. Um, Thunderbolt's the Gara killer. Yeah, we're actually really weak to plus one. We don't we don't have a choice card for this team. We have Endure, though, but... We have Extreme Speed as well. It doesn't set up, which is nice. Oh, that's another thing that Mammoth Swine is, uh, freeze has drive. freeze dry for. Gera. <laughs> yeah, let's go plus speed, Mammoth Swine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, this could work. I, I really think this could work, dude. Like, Yeah, I think so, too. I was thinking maybe Wish Moonlight, and then it's like, nah, it's, it's an offensive team. Nah, we definitely want um, Thunderbolt for the damage on that. Like, And it's also good for, like, Empoleon. Because Imp I think Empoleon is going to be amazing in this metagame. I think Empoleon actually gets knockoff, doesn't it? Because uh, it had it originally in, uh, in, in the game. Four. It should have it. Let's let's go ahead and check. I'm pretty sure I saw that too. Empoleon, I see. Wow, you do not have enough. It's okay. Wait, let me see the other guys. The other guys, no. That's whack. Ooh. It still gets well, agility though. It still gets agility though. Agility is gonna be fire, bro. Yeah. We get smashed yeah, by agility. Empoleon's but... nasty because it switches into Clef and it. Threatens everything that is in Blissey or Empoleon. So, um, but yeah, so T Bolt hitting Empoleon will definitely be helpful. Yeah, so like, I think I think uh, this would be nice. I just have random four speed for opposing Clef, like just in case, you never know. Um, yeah, I think, the e like, you don't even need to go max defense necessarily. You could probably, like, throw some special attack EVs, but for now, just, you know. Yeah, just uh, so we, we don't know. Yeah. It's gonna be, yeah, it's, it, for now, it's just a good idea just to get a feel for the metagame. Because again, everything is going to be leading towards physical defense, so you can survive Garchomp. Uh, let me calc how much Mamoswine does against uh, Clef. Clef always, way, it's Clef always two kill Mamo. I'm, I'm pretty sure Mamo always two kill if it's adamant. Always. 
Yeah, okay, it's uh, through lefties and everything. That mod is a demon. Uh, Jolly, Jolly is still, you know, a 29% chance, so wouldn't want to be switching it in, but, you know, that's a different story. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. It's just nice to have that bulk, and with the big life orb hit in return, that's also really helpful. No, I agree. All right. So yeah, I like so this. I think, we just, yeah, I we're think making we this choice team. band, right? Choice band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It band, needs extreme uh, speed, earthquake. No, I want a bulky set with heal bell. That's my <laughs> thing. Uh, so, do you do outrage dragon claw or do you do iron tail? Uh, I actually think iron tail might be a legitimate. Option. I think yeah. No, I think we need iron tail too because we're not actually great against opposing cliff. Too bad we can't put Iron Head. We can? We can't. We can. I said too bad we can't. Why can't we? It's not a TM, it's not a technical record. Oh, uh, okay. Bro, Jirachi doesn't even get Iron Head. Oh, right, right. Oh, how beautiful. Wait, Adamant? Um, or, uh, no, yeah, definitely Adamant. Yeah, that's it, bro. I'm trying to do 80% to those Infernes, man. Uh, it's... Let me uh, do the calc. Just, just to... Uh... I'm pretty sure it's like yeah. 83 to 95%, dude. Almost. Uh, does dual dual wing beat doesn't exist in this tier, right? Not currently, no. With Pokemon Home, it should. Dude, dual wing beat CBD night. Oh my god, bro! I use that there in was a Raptor. I use that at East as well. That was fun. I'm uh, on fire. All right, uh, extreme speed. Yeah, you are against uh, bulkless Infernape with a neutral nature. You are doing 66 to 78. Okay, so I was talking about the hasty ones, the ones that. Oh sure, sure. All right. Uh... Is that everything? I think it's everything. Yeah, Mammoth oh, Swine, we're gonna go uh, hasty, right? Or, or uh, naive. 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 For that, we go max speed, max attack. I think that's basically the team, guys. I know we took a little while, the same as last time, about an hour. But we went through our thought process, went through what we saw. Obviously, the team isn't perfect. There's a lot of giant threats, but we have options to play versus yeah. them. Yeah, at this early point in the meta, you just want to have your own threats, and you want to have uh, a decent enough... Uh, defensive core to where you can switch around. Stuff. Also, we completely ignored Darkrai, which I think Smogon is allowing right now because that mod's not gonna there, stay. That's not gonna last. Yeah. Uh, no, that it's too fast and too strong and has too much coverage. And even with Dark Void being nerfed, it I will make a video about how stupid Dark Dark Ride needs to be banned. Will, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will protest outside Smogon headquarters until they do what I say. <laughs> This is gonna be a fun team to use, dude. This is gonna be hella fun. Uh, to use. Well, yeah, I'm very excited to uh, to play with this. I've already blocked out my entire Friday. Not that I had anything going on anyway. <laughs> he he, he broke up with the girlfriend. That was world. it. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I think that's pretty much yeah. it. Yeah. I hope y'all enjoy. Cool. Please subscribe to Kevin. Oh, oh uh, one more thing that we could consider on Clef over T Bolt um, is Healing Wish. That that would be Ooh. the only thing just to. Bring back uh, Garchomp. Yeah. Now I don't know if this is the best idea yet, but um, if you're not finding use for T Bolt, then I would. I, I think Healing Wish is tangibly going to be useful. So like, if Garchomp gets hit by a Heatran Burn or something, or if Starmie is on its last limbs and uh, you want to bring it back for another round of Terror, I think that would be the uh, the other big consideration over T Bolt. Alright, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, uh... Especially because now now that I think about it, I mean, Empoleon is admittedly really annoying, but it's manageable enough, and Gyarados... Doesn't set really up on anything for free. It does set up on Dragon Claw Garchomp, though, which is... But after it taking does, potentially but... Stealth Rock, taking Dragon Claw minus one, taking Rough Skin after, and then it dies to extreme speed, so... Oh my god, Chomp even has Rough Skin now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. All right, so that's that's to play around with once the ladder and Wi-Fi and stuff yeah. goes up. Yeah, so we'll, figure, we'll see what happens. But this is our, uh, our our variation of Drag Mag, if you want to call it that. Uh, just offense for the new games. Uh, guys, please go ahead and subscribe to Kevin. Subscribe to me. We got a lot of content. Like I'm telling you, we got a lot of content coming out. We got a lot of content coming out. Uh, battles, guides, whatever. We'll be doing more moveset, guys. We'll be doing videos on his channel, too. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff. So hopefully we helped you out. Uh, also, if you want to pre-order the games, or if you want to, well, at this point, you buy the games, right? If you want to buy the games, you can check out uh, my Best Buy affiliate links down below. You help me out by doing that. Pre-order, let's go. Uh, and let's go. Legends RCS, excuse me. And again, please subscribe to Kevin. He is completely underrated on YouTube, and people rate him really high. So he he is underrated. But uh, I qu uh, Yeah, I quit my job, so I really need views. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. See you later.